Um, so today, today I'm going to continue with my lecture, yeah, on tests of uh, significant, significant tests. Okay, let me uh, share the screen. I will be uploading uh, some material. Yeah, I keep on uploading material um, in our Google Classroom. Yeah, I'll be uploading. So make sure that uh, you follow the classes closely. You want to post any question? You're most welcome to post questions uh, regarding your topic of research. Yeah. All right, so uh, today's uh, uh, lecture will be more on uh, what are the tests that you need to know, uh, what are the tests that you should be doing with your data. Uh, this question always uh, comes up with the student, yeah, because they are, they are very unsure which uh, test is relevant to their research. Um, and if you tend to do a uh, wrong analysis or tend to use a, a wrong test then all of your outcome of your research is is no no use at all because you're not answering what you're supposed to answer yeah um so generally the tests that i'm going to discuss here um are very general yeah it's very general and uh, i don't want to like uh, put too much things inside this slide, you know why? Uh, because at the end of the day, most of the tests you will be doing, the most you will be doing is a T-test. Uh, we have ANCOA, ANOA, we have higher, higher level, yeah? And um, uh, normally, uh, students do not use this, especially when you are undergrad, yeah? you will not be do using, because you must remember your research paper, you are trying to um, show that you are doing an intervention doing an intervention where the outcome is going to benefit the society that is what your, your aim here it's not to use the most uh, sophisticated um, software to analyze your data yeah it's, it's, that is not the main idea so the main idea here you need to analyze your data in a simple method uh, in a simple method and understandable whoever reads your research they know oh from this statistic i know that uh, what is relevant here you see so i encourage you all to use more uh, a descriptive type of uh, analysis yeah where you find mean yeah you find percentage you find standard deviation and you display more of pie chart bar chart yeah. sometimes when the your statistics becomes uh, too complicated uh, you don't know to do the interpretation you don't know how to interpret your reading yeah so interpretation here plays a bigger role than the method of analysis right okay so uh when you have two groups definitely when you have two groups then only you can compare if you only got one group you cannot compare okay so two groups here not necessarily uh you need to have one experimental one control group it could be one group but you are doing uh, your analysis two or three times. Yeah, you're doing the analysis two or three times. That means you're doing your pre-test, you're doing your post-test, and so on. Yeah? So now here, is, so when the, we are doing multivariate analysis with SPSS, actually what we are doing, we are doing comparing means. Yeah, when we say univariate means one group. When you have multivariate means you have more than one group, more than one variables. So you can do a t-test, you can do one sample t-test, you can do independent t-test uh, or living test, yeah? you can do pet t-test, you can do ANOVA. Yeah? These are the tests that you can do. So before we go into uh, deeper to all this analysis, uh, we must, uh, I must do uh, a replay first. Uh, replay means uh, we do a revision first. What is continuous data? What is categorical data? And another common mistake is students do not know what type of data they are collecting. 
if you don't know your type of debt, definitely you don't know which which type of uh, analysis are you going to do. Yeah. So if we have a, a continuous data, yeah, uh, the output, yeah, uh, output you uh, your data you collected definitely will be having a lot of values. Example, uh, temperature. If you are doing a science, a science a kind of uh, data, it will be temperature documents and all that so each value is relevant to another so once we can use uh, for if we have a continuous data i have discussed in the earlier slides uh, you can look back what are the example of continuous data so if it's one uh, if it's a continuous data you can use one sample t test you can use pet two tests uh two sample t tests yeah if we are using a categorical data, we uh, our data are all categorical, right? categorical like cl classification, yeah. Um, then uh, each value is not relevant to one another. Categorical data they are not relevant. For example, you say yes or no, they are not relevant. So uh, the type of test you can do when it's a categorical data is uh, will concern uh, sign rank test, Fisher extract test. Python, uh, Pearson chi-square test, Mac Namus test. All these are in the, your outcome, yeah? Uh, outcome that given to you, yeah? Outcome of this uh, lesson, yeah? Okay. So when, uh, so if you have a categorical data and you want to do a t-test, definitely you cannot do it. It's out. Yeah? When you use your a software, it might give you a reading, but it's not relevant. It's not relevant, okay? So what is meant by t-test? Uh, very common test is t-test yeah very t-test uh, the t-test compares the actual difference between two means in relation to the variation in the data yeah? that means uh, uh, you have two different means and the variation is depends on the standard deviation and we have one sample t-test <clears throat> okay one sample t-test allows us to test whether a sample mean is significant different from the population uh, that means uh, you already know the mean of the population. So you want to see whether your uh, t-test, you do a t-test, you want to compare the mean of the population. Uh, for example, uh, you know that the mean of the population of smokers or alcoholic among the community, you already know the value. Then you, um, you want to do a test. On your patients who are alcoholic yeah alcoholic so this alcoholic uh, pa patient you did a uh, counseling yeah counseling uh, so before they came for the uh, intervention you do not know their mean right so your sample you did you did counseling then you got your mean a new mean yeah uh, from this mean and the population mean you want to compare so now you only have one sample but you already know the mean, mean of the population. So simply when to use the one sample t-test, you should consider using this test when you have continuous data. So the, the, the basic need is, must be a continuous data collected from the group that you want to compare, that the group's average score to some known criteria. Uh, criteria. Uh, that means you already know the population's mean and you want to compare with this mean. Uh, another example, you know the mean of SPM scorers. What is the mean for all the subject yeah? for the national level? And then you want to know the uh, sample, sample in this school. So you're comparing. So you can do one sample only. So you do one sample t-test. Yeah? So often uh, perform for testing the mean value of the distribution. And uh, it can be used under the assumption that the sample distribution is normal. For large sample, the procedure performs often well even for the non-normal population. Okay. Um, um, I have uh, discussed the last lesson about normal contribution. Uh, sorry, normal distribution. Normal distribution is a bell curve. Yeah, bell curve. So it, let's say your sample is not normal distribution yeah you cannot do the t-test that is one of the criteria you must have a normal distribution let's say you don't have a normal distribution doesn't matter whether it's skewed it's skewed or not yeah? uh, 
once you don't have a normal uh, distribution, how to overcome this? That's why I always we say take a bigger sample. When you have a bigger sample, even if it's non normal uh, population, you can still do the T test. Yeah. So you need to know all these criteria before you carry out your test. Next one. One sample T test. To test whether the average weight of a student population is different from 140 pounds. Uh, for example, this is one sample T test. So a random sample of 22 uh, students weigh from the student population. Uh, so these are the weight given yeah, uh, for 22 students. So we want to perform a one sample T test. So we already know the mean of the population is 140. Yeah, 140. All right. So one sample T test, the true mean is known. And the normal distribution is assumed. That means we assume that the uh, distribution is normal. Null hypothesis, there is no difference between the mean. Mean of the sample and the mean of the population, no difference. That is our null hypothesis. Yeah. So average, uh, the average ITA score, so 84.31%. This is the true mean. True means mean, mean of the population. And then from the data, we just run through this using SPSS. Yeah, later in the slide, I will show how to run using SPSS. Then you get your, here they're showing calculation value. We are not doing calculation here. Don't worry. All this will be um, interpreted in the uh, SPSS, yeah? this uh, T-test. Means once you run the T-test, yeah? You don't have to define all this. All will be given to you. Yeah, And then, um, remember your p-value? Ah, p-value. So the value that you get, and the, uh, the, this is the population, and this is our mean. Our mean here is definitely higher. So when the mean is higher, I cannot make a, a conclusion saying that my intervention uh, worked. I cannot automatically say that... Um, now hypothesis is uh, rejected. I'm uh, yeah, considering on the alternative hypothesis. I cannot say that. Yeah, I cannot say that. That is when your t-test comes in. Although your calculation shows the mean is higher, right? Okay, then pair two sample t-test. When do you do two, two sample t-test? Uh, each sample is tested by two players or two uh, or a player player twice that means you have two different group or you have one group but you are doing it twice yeah you are doing it twice so uh, null hypothesis two normally distribution population is zero that is uh, different yeah mean different between two normally distribution population is zero that means what uh the mean between the two players is the same. No difference between them. Alternative hypothesis will say there is a difference between them. I, this also I have discussed before. Okay. So now my p-value, uh, the, the p-value after running the SPSS, the p-value will be given. So the p-value that I get is 0 0.1701. Right, which is more than my 0 0.05. So when this value is more, then I can say the difference is not statistically significant. That means not no significant. No significant means yeah, I cannot reject my null hypothesis. That means whatever, whatever I uh, the intervention that I did did not give me any difference. So I have to reject. Uh, I cannot reject my null hypothesis. Yeah? All right. Uh, we, uh, we also have with Coxon uh, rank test. Okay, according to this test, this test only you do when you have a non-parametric it's a non-parametric test. Why you do a non-parametric test? Remember I told you your population is not 
normally distributed. Uh, you can use uh, SPSS to find out whether your population is normally distributed or not normally distributed. You have way to do that. Yeah. So null hypothesis also same thing. Uh, there is no difference between the median. Yeah. So now uh, we are using median. Yeah. Okay. And then we see the p value. P value is more is more than zero zero five. So again. I cannot reject my null hypothesis. Yeah. Uh, and we have Fisher exact test. This test is also uh, for uh, it's a non-parametric. Yeah. Non-parametric. I, I have another slide which I will be sharing in the Google Classroom. Okay. So this one is also a non-parametric test. Okay. Then another one is Pearson chi-square test. Uh, Pearson chi square test, you also assume that the uh, population, sorry, the sample is uh, normally distributed. Yeah. So the null hypothesis, I said that difference between observed frequency and the true distribution is zero. Yeah. Uh, each observation is independent from one another. Then only I can use a Pearson chi-square test. That means group one and group two, they are not dependent on each other. Yeah. And um, I want to find the p-value. The p-value, I get 0 0.0121. How I get the p-value? Uh, SPSS will do it for you. Yeah. Uh, so that means, yeah, what I'm saying here, uh, it's this value is smaller than 0 0.05 when it's smaller than 0 0.05 significant significant means i reject my null hypothesis i accept my alternative hypothesis so what i'm telling here my intervention worked that means the there is a difference between the two groups there is a difference uh, between two groups maybe it could be one group pre and post so there is a difference between the pre group pre pre-test group and the post group. All right. This one is magnanimous test. Uh, it's also a non-parametric test. Yeah. According to your outcome, you need to know uh, what are the tests that you'll be doing, whether it's parametric or non-parametric. Um, then we use the, again, you look at the, it's a non-parametric test. Null hypothesis. Null hypothesis always say, both also same, both group also same. Yeah. Then I find out whether the value that I get is smaller than 0 0.05. So when it's smaller than 0 0.05, you look the score here is smaller. Yeah. Uh, it's smaller than 0 0.05. Then I say it's uh, statistically significant. There is a difference between uh, the two groups. So I can reject the null hypothesis. So whenever I run the SPSS, I always hope my P is less than 0 0.05. So I can reject my null hypothesis and I can accept the uh, alternative hypothesis. All right. Um, last lesson, I taught you how to enter all the values into the uh, our data. Yeah, all the data, how to put in the variables. So for example, here I already put in the weight. Yeah, put in the weight. So after that, I want to compare mean. I go under analysis with my weight. I go under analysis. I compare mean. So I have one sample t-test. I do one sample t-test. Yeah. So just now remember 140. Yeah. So uh, I'm testing here the my weight. Test value is 140. Okay. Now this is the outcome. Ah, outcome. So no need to calculate anything. All this will come out for you. Okay. The statistic test for the, here what is important, how to read. Uh, how to read. Uh, the statistic uh, for the test are in the following table, how you interpret. The one sample t-test statistic is 3.582, this one. Yeah. T-test, this is the value. P-value, look at your P-value. P-value, this is my P-value. 0.02. Uh, which is less than 0 0.05. Remember, when it's less, the level of significance used for this test, 
such a p-value indicate that the average weight of the sample population is significantly statistically significant different from 140 pounds so it in 95 confidence uh, confidence interval estimate for the difference between the population mean weight 140 is 11.27 this one that means you are 95 percent confident yeah uh, the confident level like this is 0 0.05 yeah 0 0.05 from 95 percent five percent remember the graph i show you where the five percent will fall uh, lower and upper level so what can i say when this is um, less than 0 0.05 so i know that the the intervention i did yeah is um successful that means my null hypothesis what is my null hypothesis my null hypothesis i said mean sample is equal to mean population so my alternative uh, hypothesis mean sample is not same with the mean population so now i'm telling you that my intervention whatever i did has improved my samples reading from the average so maybe these people they went through a uh, a program to reduce their weight. For example, they went for London management uh, program. They want to reduce their weight. Huh? So uh, when they started the program, maybe the average of the weight was 140 pound. 140 pound. So from 140 pound, they went through this uh, management uh, uh, weight management program. Now the average uh, became less. That means the group, everyone managed to reduce weight. So when they reduce weight, now I'm doing a test to show that my intervention, whatever exercise they did, improved their weight. So now after putting in all the data, it shows that really the program worked. Because here shows, you see, statistically significant. Statistically significant, that means they improved. I'm rejecting my null hypothesis. I'm accepting my alternative hypothesis and then we also have another kind of a t test yeah? um, so the purpose is to test whether or not the population represented by the two sample have a different mean this one we call as independent sample t test yeah uh, independent sample t test measure the significant difference between yeah uh, in the means of two category, two variable, or two group. Okay, like example, whether there is a significant difference in the satisfaction level of consumer using prepaid and postpaid packaging. Here we have packaged in two subcategory that are variable and test variable is satisfaction level. Or social work students have higher GPA than nursing students. Social work student volunteer for more hours per week than education majors. So here we have two groups which are not related at all. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we are testing two groups where they are not related at all. Just now was one group. They are related. The same people undergo the uh, weight management program or London management program. After the program, they are the same people. You pair them up. Uh, you pair them up. When you have paired them up, you call them as pet t -tests. Yeah. So we have different, different t -tests. As I told you just now, um, depends. Yeah. Uh, so you must do the correct test uh, individually. Yeah. Depends on your research question. Um, independent sample t -tests, that grouping variable or categorical variable should be measured on nominal scale whereas test variable should be measured on interval scale or ratio scale. Yeah? This is the level of measurement for this test. Normality. I talk so much about normality. Uh, so uh, you might be thinking, when I collect the data, how do I know whether uh, is it normal or it's not normal, my distribution? You can do it in your SPSS. We call it as living test. Yeah. So normality, the test variable should be normal yeah, or homogeneous. The group must be homogeneous. In order to check the homogeneity, independent t-test have a living test. 
So whether you want to know whether uh, your sample is normal, homogeneous, you must do living test. If the test variable is abnormal, then we cannot proceed to independent t-test. Rather, we have to switch for non-parametric test, huh? which is alternative for t-test. So for t-test, alternative test is man with me test. Um, and so uh, here you need to be clear that we have parametric test and non-parametric test. Um, as a statistician, I, I always like to do a parametric test compared to a non-parametric test. So t-test is a parametric test. So to do a parametric test, a t-test, I have few criteria. One, my, my sample distribution must be normal. So to know whether it's normal or not normal, I must do a living test using SPSS. If my, uh, my distribution is normal or homogeneous, then I can call it as I'm going to do a parametric test. So from a parametric test, I must decide whether I want to do a t-test. Yeah? T-test also, we have different, different t-tests. One sample t-test, independent t-test, two pair t-tests. But I don't want to go very deep inside there. You will get scared of statistics then, right? Um, uh, so you just have to know, uh, this is just knowledge that, uh, yeah, we have uh, two type of uh, tests. Yeah. So now uh, non-parametric, I cannot do two tests. Uh, t test is not applicable because your distribution is not normal. So I will do man with me test. All these programs, you can find it in uh, SPSS, right? Okay. Um, now, you see like uh, normality, I want to know whether my distribution is normal or not. Yeah, normally, normally is bell curve. Lah. Uh, I, I, so what I do, use SPSS, go under descriptive. Yeah, all this I'll be sharing with you later. Uh, you put mean, standard deviation, kurtosis, uh, minimum, maximum, then you just continue. And then uh, what I want to test on, I want to see normality for what? Education, yeah, whatever. So you go on. And you click the living test. The independent sample t test assume that the variance of the independent variable for both groups are equal in the population. So this assumption is evaluated using living test. Living test is for what? To find whether there is uh, the distribution. Yeah, is whether it's normal, whether it's homogeneous or not. The null hypothesis for this test state that the variance for both groups are equal. The desired outcome for this test is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. We want to demonstrate that the mean is equal. Yeah, we want to demonstrate that the variance for the both group is equal. So we want to maintain our null hypothesis. It's not we want to reject, yeah, we want to maintain. All right. Um, so you look at the significant level. You look at the significant is one zero point one six one, which is greater than zero point five. That is what I want. I want to show that the distribution is normal, the variance is normal. Yeah. So equal variance assume formula for the independent sample test should be used for the analysis. So my sample, I'm happy because it is uh, normally distributed using living test. Okay. And then there is another thing here that we see skewness and kurtosis. Uh, the values here, this also shows whether your distribution is normal or not normal. Just now was living test. One way. Another way, or some of us will do both also. Lah. Yeah. So skewness is negative uh, uh, 0 0.137. Kurtosis is 1.2. Uh, they, they fall between positive one and negative one. Actually, they can go until, yeah. The range, uh, they can go between uh, plus minus two, plus minus two. Yeah? Uh, here, they accept the value and uh, plus one and minus one, skewness. Okay, skewness is well, okay, good. Um, but the kurtosis outside the range. Lah. So if you see uh, here, we have to reject lah, that 
the variant equal variance uh, is 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 rejected lah using this test. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, independent t test. Independent t test. Uh, this is how you run your SPSS. Now, pet sample t test. A PET sample t-test is used to test if an observed difference between two mean is statistically significant. Whether there is a significant difference between the average value of the same measurement made under two different conditions. Assumption for PET sample t-test to run the PET sample t-test should have normal distribution again is a large data set and has no outlier. What is outlier? Outlier is a reading which is very extremely out from the mean. If your reading is very far from the mean, that means we call it as outlier. For example, you are doing uh, age group. Age group. So your age group is, uh, we know that a normal human can, can maybe live until 80 or 90. Let's say in the sample, you suddenly saw 150 years old. So that is an outlier. Is that the example? Yeah. Okay. Research question. So when you have a research question like this, yeah, uh, HO, null hypothesis. There is no influence of internet on academic achievement for this class. That means how many hours of internet uh, they use. Yeah, uh, Internet how many hours they use it does not depend on their uh, achievement achievement does not depend on how many hours of internet you use yeah so for alternative you say there is an influence first one you saying no influence second one you're saying influence so your research you're trying to show that there is an influence uh, number of internet on the uh, achievement of the students all right so you're testing here the same number of students here yeah? the same group yeah so how do you do? You click analyze, compare mean. This one you use with the SPSS, yeah. So I give you the ways here, lah, how to do it. So when you when you have a, a later on, I will be sharing some data with you, so you can use the data just to play, just to find uh, what results you get, yeah. Okay. So after putting in, uh, you uh, this is what you get your mean, pair one, pre score and post score. Pre-score mean is 31 and then the post-score is 46. You, need, you can see that there is an increase in the mean, correct? Increase in the, in the mean. And then you look at your significant here. Significant value. Here correlation, there is a strong correlation, 0 0.729. Very strong correlation. Okay, the significant here is 0 0.17. 0 point is is uh, is is less than 0 0.05 right uh, it's less than 0 0.05 if it's less than 0 0.05 i can reject null hypothesis i can accept the alternative hypothesis that means i'm going to say that there is an influence of internet on academic achievement for this class that's all yeah all right you see your pre-score and your post-score, your mean. There is a difference between the mean is negative 14.7. Yeah? It's significant, you see? 0 0.000. That means I can I can uh, uh, bravely say with confidence. How many percent confidence? 95% confidence that there is an influence, yeah, internet influence on these students' performance or achievement. So there is, you see the conclusion? There is a statistically significant mean score gain from the pre-score to a post-score. Given that uh, the researcher is interested in assessing the result in one direction, that is one tail test. This is what I have discussed before. So the significant value to tail locate in the above table. Above table just now was two tail. Yeah, to tell yeah. Uh, so it must be divided by two before reporting the final result. In this case, the 
it remains the same. 0.002, if you divide by 2, you still get 0.002. All right, the next one is um, analysis of variance or ANOVA. Uh, here, what is here? Just now we are talking about two groups only. Now we are talking about three groups or more category. Yeah? Then ANOVA comes in. Uh, ANOVA comes in. You must have three groups, but I know we don't go to that level. Lah, yeah? So your now hypothesis, you see the mean is the same. And then for the uh, three groups, the mean is the same. The alternative will be there is a difference between the three groups. Yeah. Uh, again, the assumption. So I don't don't have to repeat lah. You already know. Yeah. Then uh, when I'm going to do this test, it must be a parametric parametric test. Yeah. And uh, your data should be interval or ratio, and there must be a normality. Yeah. Normality. Uh, how to prove the normality? I will do Levin's test. Yeah, Levin test. So this one I discussed already. Yeah, uh, for Levin test, we try to show that our now hypothesis is accepted. We want to say the uh, variance are equal. If the test is not normal, then we switch to non-parametric. Yeah, for example. Kutsal uh, Wallis test that is alternative for ANOVA. Yeah? Uh, Whitney Wen is for T test alternative. ANOVA is different from T test yeah? because T test is for two groups, uh, but ANOVA is three groups or more. So there's the example. Lah. Right. Uh, ANOVA see only significant difference, yes or no? In order, okay. So uh, you want to see whether there is a difference between the means. Uh, you, you want to see whether there is a difference or there is a no difference. That's right. But you don't know who, which one is different, which group is different. You've got three groups. I say there is a difference. But I don't know whether group one and group two different or group two and group three different or group one and group three different. I don't know which, there is the difference. So to extend that, they have post hoc tests. Yeah, post hoc tests. So if normal, we do post of stacks to the key. If not normal, we will do downturn. Yeah, so uh, this are uh, under ANOVA, we have one way ANOVA. Again, the significant level. We look at the significant level and post test, yeah, post post hoc test to compare which group, yeah, uh, LBW with uh, experimental group or LBW with control group where is the difference yeah which one is significant so it looks like lbw and control there is a significant because it's less than 0 0.05 and also uh, full term yeah there is a difference so i i think uh that is about our test here mostly i talk about uh, how to do t-test using SPSS t-test. We have few different types of t-test. And I know why I don't touch so much because uh, it is between three groups. I don't think uh, most of you will go into three groups. Yeah, And then I know why which one has uh, difference between the groups, group one, group two, or group two and group three, or group one and group three. We has we have to do post hoc test. But remember, whatever test you're going to do, you must test, you have assumption there. Assumption here is your uh, normality distributed. Your sample are normally distributed. So how to test whether uh, the sample is normally distributed? You have to do living, living test. Okay? So that's all for today's class. Um, the next slide, I will be talking more about parametric and non-parametric tests. Okay, actually my lecture, I have to give you 10 lecture, but I will go on a bit more just to finish up the uh, syllabus. Yeah? So uh, I think it sh should not be a problem because you will be just watching the video. And please give me some feedback if you have any problem. Please um, don't forget... Uh, to contact me yeah, and let me know if you have any uh, problem, right? Okay, so I think uh, that's all for today. I will meet you again with different uh, 
topic next time. Thank you very much for listening.